So I did a quick YouTube and Google search to see what other people had to say about this topic of why blockchain is important. And I was actually pretty disappointed at the content. There's like a few videos on cryptocurrencies and how it could disrupt the financial sector. And that's pretty much it. It seems like people really just want to talk about the market and token prices all the time. For me, that stuff is really all just a secondary byproduct of my main reasons for being interested in this tech. I think a lot of people see the hype and get excited about about investing kind of the surface level of the crypto community. And it's kind of surprising how many actually couldn't even tell you what could be the most practical real use cases for this stuff and how it could benefit the world. There's nothing wrong if you only care about it as an investment vehicle. Not everyone has to be idealistic, but even so, this might provide you with some things to think about. There's a quote from American economist Douglas North, which says that as humans, we try to lower uncertainty about one another so that we can exchange value. And I think that really gets to the core of why cryptocurrency matters, which is removing unnecessary middlemen. Douglas North was exploring institutions as a way to lower uncertainty, but because of blockchains, we can write code that lowers uncertainty with computers. I often think of like Uber as an example, a notoriously predatory big tech company. Very little of the hefty price tag actually goes to the driver of the Uber. The greedy middleman eats the majority of the cost, which leaves both the driver and the passenger satisfied. But we put up with it anyway because if we didn't have the Uber app, we wouldn't be able to connect with drivers to facilitate the transaction in the first place. But what if there was a way that we could connect through a platform that leveraged distributed ledger technology to require funds from the passenger to enter the vehicle, lock them in escrow in a smart contract until the ride is complete, and then release the funds to the driver's wallet. Information about the driver and the passenger could be derived from data that they choose to attach to their wallet, so think like an Uber rating. Suddenly, the ride costs less for the passenger without Uber taking a huge cut, and more of the money is able to go directly to the driver offering the service. Some small gas fees on each transaction to keep the chain running is all that's needed. This can be applied to dozens of different industries and scenarios, basically increasing opportunities for individuals and decreasing the need for big banks banks and big tech. I think product tracking is another major area of opportunity for blockchain. Imagine having a database with the efficiency of a monopoly, but without the monopoly. Instead of trusting product labels, you could see all the data on chain about where a product was harvested, packaged, and shipped at each step of the production process. Again, we could help to reduce predatory tendencies in big business when there's no way to sweep supply chain under the rug. People like to point out the immutability and transparency of blockchains, but what about data privacy? Privacy. Well, because of advancements in chain interoperability, we'll be able to leverage this transparency on an as-desired basis. Projects like Polkadot are making it possible to transfer data between public and private chains. For example, you could link your medical information to your identity on the blockchain, accessible to any doctor anywhere when needed, but only as you choose. Essentially, you could have the ability to own your own identity rather than being granted one by a government. I think concepts like this could be critical for helping to solve issues like the refugee crisis. Speaking of owning your own data, this is where Web 3.0 really comes into play. Some people will argue that the internet is already decentralized and therefore Web 3 is unnecessary and just trying to sell you on a scam. I would say that yes, there is certainly an argument for the network that is the internet itself already being somewhat decentralized. But what we do on the internet on a day-to-day -day basis is very disproportionately controlled by big tech. Imagine connecting your wallet when you begin your browsing session and then you, the viewer, getting paid for the ads you watch instead of a middleman like YouTube or Instagram. When you own your data, you have to be compensated for it. Another significant Web3 item is distributed autonomous organizations or DAOs, which give people the opportunity to have more control over the work they do and see more of the benefit through basically equity for part-time work. Now, we haven't even talked about NFTs. I think really I could probably do a whole separate video on NFTs and why I think most people are looking at them in completely the wrong way right now. But the reason I think this is because I believe the real value in non-fungible tokens is the utility which they can unlock. NFTs are really just a token of ownership. Right now, the sad truth is that 70% of people worldwide actually lack a title for land they rightfully own. Some countries are actually trialing blockchain-based titles, and maybe this is a way that could help prevent colonization and help prevent people from being kicked off of their own land. 
The same goes for on-chain sale of businesses and other entities. There's also major opportunities for NFTs within gaming. I imagine a scenario where the in-game items that gamers work so hard for could have real-world value on an exchange. Suddenly, your Minecraft society becomes a true economic force, and those building the virtual worlds we enjoy are compensated for their time like those who build the physical. While all of these things and more are possible, and many are even in progress, blockchain technology is still in its infancy. It will have to go through a lot of trial and even failure, but this is the kind of stuff that motivates me to be in this space. Blockchain systems are flawed too, and maybe all of this will turn out to be a failed experiment. But right now, this is where we are, and at least we're trying something, and it feels like this is what I can do to help. Thanks for watching. I hope this gets you thinking about why crypto is important to you, and I'll see you in the next video.